What's going on everybody? Dots Gaming from DotsGaming.com here and today I'm bringing you guys a Stamina Dragonite PvP build for the Elder Scrolls Online Markarth patch on behalf of Nemesis Esports. So if you guys are familiar with my website, you will have seen this build, the Valken, there before for my stam dk the valken was a build born in graymore where the healing got super changed that patch and so i kind of struggled a little bit with where i wanted to take my stamina dragonite and the valken build was born once i figured it out and the build has continued to grow and evolve over graymore stone thorn and now here in markarth and we have an updated version of the build a bit different than the last one that i posted but i did want to share these new changes with you guys so you can see what i am running here on my stamina DK. If you are looking for a non proc stamina dragon knight, this does not have any proc sets on it. So if you are looking for a proc build, you're going to need to look elsewhere. But this is a high weapon damage, medium armor, uh, non proc build. So if that's what you're looking for, then stay tuned because the Valken build will be good for what you're looking for. So we're going to kick things off with our monster set, and that is going to be Blood Spawn. Blood Spawn got a minor buff and after that minor buff i did think it was good enough to stick back on the stamina dragon knight so it has a line of stamina recovery and you have a chance to gain 13 ultimate and increase your physical and spell resist by 3700 for five seconds and it's going to occur every five seconds so this not only gives us stamina recovery which we need as a dragon knight but it gives us ultimate which gives us sustain as a dragon knight it gives us damage because we're popping out more ultimates and it gives us a little bit of resistances when we need it giving us a little bit of defense to kind of help us keep us in the fight and in the fray and this extra resistance that we get from blood spawn pads perfectly well with our second set and that is orgdom scales orgdom scales still remains on my stamina dk build absolutely love this set gives us a line of health recovery two lines of maximum health and while you're under 60 percent hp your health recovery is increased by 770 and your physical and spell resist are increased by 6200 one of the biggest issues i always found with my stam dk in the past was recovering from being behind and so the uh organum scales gives us the ability to do so by giving us a big boost to our hp recovery when we get when we start to get low as well as some nice defensive mitigation so between this and between blood spawn we are seeing nearly 10k extra resistance coming straight from these two sets allowing us to run in medium armor and still remain pretty tanky now our front bar damage set is going to trigger a ton of people because it always does whenever i use it and that is going to be hunting's rage now let me just say this a bunch of times if you want to use new moon alkalite use new moon alkalite if you want to use new moon alkalite use new moon alkalite I prefer to play with higher sustain, so I choose to go with Hunting's Rage instead, giving us two lines of weapon critical, a line of maximum stamina, and then a big boost to our weapon damage. So this gives us a nice pad to our weapon damage on the front bar, especially when you combine it with the fact that we're running triple infused weapon damage on the jewelry and a Nern Honed Maul. So we're able to get a big boost to our weapon damage stat which is really nice. We want to go into a weapon damage stack as a stam DK because we have easy access to both major and minor brutality. And again, you feel that sustain is not an issue or you like to, you know, play with higher damage and lower sustain. Again, feel free to use Numen Alkalite here. On the back bar, we still have Potentates. You could use Potentates. You could use Death's Wind. You just want to use a defensive two-piece on the back bar to help reduce damage in some way because we do not need Hunting's Rage on that back bar. Now, this is a medium armor build, and so we are running a two heavy. So we have a heavy chest and shoulders, and then the rest are going to be medium. We are running five impen, uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then two well-fitted. Um, I like to dodge roll a lot on this guy, so I do run the two well-fitted piece. Again, triple infuse on the jewelry with all weapon damage, a Nern Honed Maul with a Berserker Glyph on the front bar, and then we are running a Nern Honed One-Hander on the back bar with double dot poisons, as well as a sturdy max stam shield. You could also feel free to use a well-fitted shield here. You can use a reinforced shield, a Nern Honed shield, whatever trait you want on that back bar shield is pretty much up to you. Now, in terms of our skills, this is a dizzying swing build, so we are using D-Swing. This is really focused about enabling as much dizzying swing into leap damage as possible. That's how I've been liking playing my stamina characters in Battlegrounds and Open World. So that's kind of the combo where we're going for, where we whittle them down with Noxious Breath and also put Major Breach on them to reduce their resistances, get a little bit of a dot ticking as well as our poison status effect. We smack them with that dizzying swing into the Take Flight. Look at that Take Flight tooltip unbuffed. We got 20k tooltip. 
dealing big damage to our enemies, cheap costing ultimate. We generate a ton of ultimate from being a Nord and having blood spawn, so we're able to get this uh, super often. So the Dezzying Swing into Leap combo, super deadly, especially with the Maul and with the Major Breach from Noxious. So we are able to deal massive damage to our enemies. This deals instant damage, sets enemies off balance, and then stuns them if you hit them a second time, and will snare them if you cannot. So we ran, already explained Noxious Breath. Executioner is our execute for if our combo does not one-shot somebody, so we will go into this afterwards, dealing damage, and that damage increases the lower their HP is. I am running Camo Hunter here for the extra weapon damage on the front bar from the Fighter Skill skill line, the ability to see targets in stealth, and we also gain Major Savagery and Minor Berserk, so that gives us extra critical and 5% increased damage done when we deal damage from someone's flank. So again, just enabling as much power as possible in our burst combo. Uh, we do run forward momentum on the front bar as our movement and root immunity. I don't feel the need for rally in this build. And plus running forward momentum allows me to get major expedition from a different skill. So we are running forward momentum for the brutality, for the endurance, and for that snare immunity. Because running forward momentum allows us to run elude. So elude gives us major evasion for 32 seconds, 20% damage reduced from area of effect. But... The biggest reason we run this is for the second effect, is while this effect is active, when you take damage from a direct area of effect attack, you gain major expedition for five seconds. So by just having this skill up at all times, we're basically able to constantly have major expedition up, and we are able to take a lot less damage from those area of effect attacks that are giving us that major expedition. So really, really good uh, ability. We're able to run this because we are running that forward momentum on the front bar. And honestly, my heals are pretty much covered by the first three skills on the back bar. First one being Cauterize, giving us a strong heal every five seconds, scaling with our highest offensive stats. So we are able to use this as a stamina character, and this gets boosted even more when we use Fragmented Shield, which gives us major mending, increasing our healing done by 16% for six seconds and giving us a minor shield. You also couple this with Resolving Vigor, giving us a 14k heal, between Vigor, Cauterize, uh, Fragmented Shield, uh, between our health recovery from Orgdoms, we are able to stay very survivable in this build. Our armor buff is going to be Volatile Armor. I know in the past you've seen me run uh, Hardened Armor on this build, but I don't physically, I don't personally think I need the shield this patch. Defense feels fine with this build, so I went for Volatile to get the extra minor dot, but also give something else for them to purge and to just help take people out of stealth. So, Ran Vaults out for that reason, so our armor buff gives us uh, Burning Heart, returns magic damage to the attacker when we get hit in melee range, gives us a minor dot, so very good skill. Back bar ultimate, we are running Temporal Guard for minor protection. Uh, I don't personally feel I need a back bar ult on this build, so I do choose to run the minor protection and the ability to kind of do some tricky plays with Temporal Guard if I want to. If you do say, hey, you know, I don't really care about the minor protection, you can absolutely go ahead and use Spell Wall. Spell Wall is incredibly strong, 135 ultimate, uh, automatically box for you at no cost and reflects all projectiles for 7 seconds, so that is also a very good option. Now, in terms of the build stats, we have 11.5k maximum magicka, 25k maximum health. We got 30k max dam on the front bar and 31k on the back bar. 500 magicka and health recovery. We have 1500 stamina recovery. We got 3700 unbuffed weapon damage. Our weapon critical with a potion goes up to 40%. Uh, we also have 20k spell resist and 17k physical on the front bar, going up to 20k physical resist and 23.5k spell on the back bar, higher if you use Death's Wind. And then we have 2800 critical resistance. We use the Warrior Mundus on this build for our weapon damage stack, and we are running the Lava Foot Soup and Salt Trees buff food for increased maximum stamina and stamina recovery. In terms of race for this build, it's hard to recommend anything other than Nord. Nord is just a perfect race for stamina Dragonite. You get health, you get stamina, you get a big boost to resistances, and you get extra ultimate generation which just means more sustain for our our dragon knight here so it's absolutely perfect perfect race for us to have potions like i said we are using savagery potion so we have major savagery restore health and major fortitude very important and restore stamina and giving us major endurance so those are the potions of choice for the build i don't physically or i don't really think that we have a lot of magical problems in this build um cauterize is super cheap um, Voltile is not super expensive. Fragmented is our big Magicka consumer, but these three skills, um, but Battle Roar just gives me plenty of Magicka sustain, so I don't feel that I need tripods personally really ever. With how often we're getting our ultimate, like, that pretty much covers us in terms of Magicka sustain. Moving into our champion points, we have 23 into Blessed, 81 into Master at Arms, 56 into Precise Strikes, 46 into Piercing, and 64 into Mighty, 66 into Ironclad, 32 into Resistant, 
48 into Thick Skin, 49 into Hardy, 43 into Elemental Defender, and 32 into Quick Recovery. 61 into Warlord, 4 into Siphoner, 75 into Mooncalf, 27 into Healthy, 66 into Shadow Ward, and 37 into Tumbling. You also feel free to move these Siphoner points somewhere else if you don't want them here. In terms of our basic rotation, you want to maintain on yourself at all times, Volatile Armor, you want to maintain Elude, you want to maintain forward momentum, and you want to make sure that you are using Fragmented Shield frequently enough to maintain the Minor Brutality buff on yourself. You are then going to basically want to maintain Noxious Breath on your enemy and just go into your D-Swing spam. When your ult is up, go into D-Swing into your ultimate, you're going to deal a huge chunk of damage, and then go into your Execute. When you are getting low and you need a heal, go into a dodge roll. This build can dodge roll and sprint plenty. Use Fragmented Shield. Uh, use your Vigor. Go into Cauterize. And you will make sure that you're getting huge, huge, huge heals rolling on you. Plus, if your Organums kicks in, you're just going to be getting a lot of passive healing regeneration on your character. But guys, that is the updated Valken build for the Elder Scrolls Online Mark Growth Patch. Really, really like this build. It's a ton of fun. I've been enjoying it on my Stam DK a lot, and hopefully you guys do enjoy it as well. If you guys did like this video, I'd appreciate it if you left a like on it. Subscribe to the Nemesis Esports channel for more of my builds posted here. Um, as well as other great gaming content that they have posted. If you want to check out a written version of this build, feel free to check it out over on DotsGaming.com. And I do believe that Nemesis is going to be doing some sort of Markarth giveaway at some point, so check the description, check the pinned comments, check all those places to see if there is something going on currently. But that is going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you for checking out this video. I do appreciate it. Um, as always, I'm Dots Gaming, and I'll talk to you all soon.